So back in 1992, Somalia, particularly Mogadishu, was uh, an ungoverned uh, place. So there was no government in the situation. It was all ran by uh, different groups of militia factions. The main one at the time was run by a, a guy called uh, Mohammed Farah Aidid. And he used to use hunger as a weapon. He would steal shipments that would come in for the civilians of the area. He would give them to his, his army and he would keep it from the poor and the civilians and then stop those shipments coming in. So, so in 1992, the UN deployed and they were there for, for a year with factions of, there was um, some Australians were there, there was Malaysians in Sushu, um, Pakistani army were there, as were um, the 10th Mountain of the US Army. To begin with, it was uh, the US Army had the 10th Mountain Regiment there and the US Marines also deployed in 1992. And they were there just to reinforce the, the shipments coming in, make sure that these uh, units were defended. Um, and also, towards the end of uh, 1992, a, a, a UN convoy was attacked and a fair few personnel were killed, which then led to Bill Clinton deploying Task Force Ranger, which is what we depict here, uh, de were deployed to Somalia to, to reinforce that again, and actually more point towards taking and capturing key militia members from uh, ID's militia. So uh, on October 3rd, 1993, uh, Task Force Ranger were deployed into the city into a, a really bad area called Bakara Market. And their key point was to, to capture two key members of militia for, for militia members from uh, the main militia there with ID. And uh, they deployed there. The unit, the mission was only supposed to take 30 minutes. So they didn't take any water, they didn't take food. They just filled every pouch they could with ammunition and expected to be in and out, capture the enemy and come back out. Unfortunately, Two helicopters were shot down and crashed into the street, which was uh, Super 6-1 and Super 6-4. Uh, Super 6-1 is what we're depicting here today. Uh, two Blackhawk helicopters crash landed back on base as well, which isn't depicted in the film, but, but happened in real life. Which This led to the uh, Task Force Ranger being stuck in the uh, city for near on 30 plus hours uh, until a UN convoy, uh, Pakistani army, Malaysian army could come in with remnants of the uh, US army and uh, get them out of, out of the city. This whole battle itself, although in the scheme of things it was only a small, small incident, but in the long run it affected military tactics for, for years and it still does now. Um, the way teams are deployed, the way helicopters are used has been dramatically changed as a result of this. So even key functions of a, uh, of a helicopter have been changed from what happened here. So when the helicopters crashed in Somalia, the um, miniguns were operated on a, a single battery system. So if the helicopter wasn't operating, the miniguns couldn't have been used. So after that, they put in a place so that the, the miniguns on board can be used even if the helicopter's not operable. Things like that, tactics were changed as a result. And they, for, politically, it was quite an embarrassment for the, the US that so, so many people had been killed and injured in, in such a space that in a battle that hadn't really been publicized or heard of. Um, so at the end of 1993, uh, pretty much after this battle, they were they were taken out of, uh, out of out of Mogadishu, which didn't really help. I mean, all the veterans that we've spoken to have said that they would have stayed there, and they were quite keen to get the job done. It, it turned out that uh, ID was then killed by by another civilian uh, not long after they'd been taken out. But um, yeah, it was it wasn't very well frowned upon. It was quite frowned upon by the U.S. Army that they'd pulled out of it. So we're quite a small group in the scheme of things. I mean, we, we have one of the largest displays here, uh, but the smallest amount of members, there's, there's probably six or seven key members here. We turn up, we're friends, family, and we just turn up, put in all the effort we can into the show. It takes us six days to set up, and then we spend another six days showing off what we do, and then another two days packing down and, and getting back home again. But we're really dedicated, and we have a massive passion for what we do. We're constantly in touch with the veterans that served in Task Force Ranger, and we just want to do them proud and get their story out there. It's one of the only one in the UK we hand restored it ourselves back to how you see it today. We're really proud of what we've achieved with it and hope you guys enjoy it. So, in 1992, Somalia was a country that was not run.
obviously display as Black Hawk Down or the Battle of Mogadishu is also known. Um, it's really the first main conflict in my lifetime that I can remember seeing in the newspaper or hearing about. I know it wasn't very well documented at the time, but it's the first thing really fixed in my memory of, of conflict and I'm a very keen interest in uh, military history and it just kind of spiralled from there really. Do you take part to other shows in the War and Peace revival here? I mean, for us it's a big logistical nightmare to get all this here. We were one of the biggest displays. We have to dig up the floor and it, it takes us a good six days solid setting up. So there's not really any other shows that we can really make. However, with, with the, the new addition of the Little Bird, we can actually do a, a bit of what we call a 360 light. So we'll take this with a few buildings and do a smaller display and uh, get the word out there a bit. Ready to take part to some movies? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're happy to do things with movies, TV and film. We've already helped out with a few documentaries and things and uh, been some technical advisors on that. So yeah, we, we're getting a name out there for ourselves. Thank you very much indeed. No Thank you. Thank you.